I'm Nerea, I'm a nurse, and today I'm working in the intensive care unit. We were warned beforehand that it would be like a wartime hospital. We don't even have the essentials. What you see in the background there, the ICU, was put up at the last minute. This is because we're going to get many seriously ill patients in need of ventilators. We're wearing double protective clothing, the FFP3 masks and this one on top. We have to reuse the protective masks for a minimum of three shifts. Those are shifts of 10 or 12 hours. Therefore, we put on the surgical protection over the top because we don't think the FFP3 masks keep us protected. This whole area is the so-called contamination zone. Here we store the material that will be reused, goggles, pulse oximeters, blood pressure monitors. The single-use surgical gowns will be reused up to three times. We put them in this bag and sterilize them. After one wash, they don't really protect anymore. But we sterilize them up to three times because they are simply not enough protective suits. These are extremely hard shifts. Afterwards, you come home completely drained. Although we try our hardest and go beyond our limits, our efforts achieve nothing in the end. People keep on dying, and they die in inhumane conditions. I became a nurse to care for people's health, not to let them die. And if we're honest, that's exactly what we're doing, because we just don't have the means to save everyone. The bed had to be turned so you could see this, sunrise in the age of COVID-19. Croce Rosa Celeste. It's like my second home, like a second family. I am Andrea, one of the hundred paramedics who is now on duty in Milan during these corona times. In the past few weeks, our days were a lot more exhausting than we had been used to. We take the patients with us. The relatives aren't allowed to come into the hospital. The patients are isolated there. They spend their last hours or days surrounded by people who are wearing protective clothing. And they don't see their faces. They don't know their names. They don't see their smiles. Ambulance. Should we come down? No, I'm coming up. Shall I let you in? Yes, thanks. But please also open the front door. We are constantly reading news on the infections and deaths. In the first few days, I was always terribly worried about it, and now it doesn't affect me anymore. It used to be that 150 cases would impress me. Today I read 980 deaths as though it were normal, like we were already expecting it. We're normalizing the tragedy. It's strange right now. 
When we're on duty and come to a house, the people then hide themselves behind the curtains and watch how we take the person away. All eyes are then focused on the patient. It brings to mind a raid in wartime. What happens is that we're called out to old people with severe breathing difficulties. But they don't want to come with us to the hospital. They want to stay at home, to die there. Psychologically, that's really difficult. We can actually handle a lot. I've worked in two earthquakes, a flood, and in snowbound rescue missions. I'm used to people suffering. But not this. This exceeds everything. I have the impression that it's getting a little worse every day. Hopefully things will soon be better, because it simply can't get much worse. In this job, I have to do things I didn't believe were possible even 20 days ago, even last week, even the day before yesterday. I have friends and family who kind of jokingly send me messages about like, are you saving the world now? This is a critical step, right? Yes, it's a very critical step. You may have worked like 48 hours for nothing at this step. <laughs> if you rip the gel now, yeah. it's all over. So what we do in this lab principally is we purify individual proteins from the virus and then we use these individual proteins to go and look at uh, the specific activities. So this is why we don't have to wear full body suits in the lab or anything like that because we're not actually dealing with the whole virus or anything that's infectious. Ninety percent of the time in research it's just really frustrating and you don't get the results you want and you don't understand why you're seeing certain things and you have to repeat things. When we look at the SARS, the original SARS um, outbreak, which happened in 2003, it was almost the same situation. It was a mass panic and all this money went into funding it as the virus uh, wasn't such a big threat anymore. Funding was kind of cut. If the SARS funding originally had continued going, people would actually we'd actually be in a lot better situation than what we are now. We would know a lot more about this virus um, and have something a bit more optimal to treat people with. Today we receive protective suits from China. As you can see, it isn't my size, but at least it protects me more than the gowns we had before. After 10 hours, we can take off our protective clothing. It's really claustrophobic to be wrapped up so long. We even have to wear bandages underneath, otherwise our skin becomes sore. And despite this, I have some sore spots. This is how we end the shift after 10 hours. I've just come home from the night shift. It wasn't a good shift. One patient suffered cardiac arrest. He'd stopped breathing, even though he was connected to the respirator. We immediately did a cardiac massage, but we were unable to resuscitate him. When the doctors investigated him, it turned out he was over 70. He was 77 years old and should in fact have been intubated. He ought to have gone into the intensive care unit for that. But at the moment, we can't accept those who are older than 70 years old. 
So we stopped doing CPR. There was nothing left to do but let him die. It is always the same feeling of giving everything and going to our limits and despite this getting nowhere. Under normal circumstances, the patient would have completely recovered. He would have come into the intensive care unit, got better, and would have lived another 10 years. But under current conditions, we were unable to save him this evening. The psychological burden is unbelievable. Right now, for medical personnel, it is difficult, really difficult. To be honest, I don't know how I can keep going without psychological assistance. But hey, we can't lose courage. We want to help the people and we hope that it will soon be possible again to do the job we love, namely caring for people. Monday, 5.20 a.m., and I'm having my breakfast. Cookies and milk. I always eat the same. Eight cookies and a glass of cold milk. That's how I give myself a good start to the day. We're becoming accustomed to the emergency. What used to be absurd is now normal. Normalizing or becoming accustomed are perhaps not the right words because of the severity of the situation. We still have to be very attentive. Our generation has merely grown up with the stories from our grandparents about the war. Even our parents didn't experience the war. We also think about it in this insane situation, if and when it'll all be over, and what the really important things in life are. We're simply not prepared for a situation like this. The world wasn't prepared for a situation like this. They're on the steps. They're coming down. And we have 100% success. Wow, this is nerve-taking, <laughs> right? Yeah. It's, uh, it's probably around 8.30 and it's Friday at last. Um, so uh, I spent about six hours yesterday on this machine here, uh, which is a quench flow, quench flow machine used to do very fast uh, time series experiments. Fortunately, the, uh, the experiment went perfectly. Uh, everyone's really happy with the results. And it's really nice because we now have a mechanism of action for how these drugs are actually functioning, which is obviously really important if you're going to go treat people with these drugs is to know how they're functioning. Maybe we should expect a war soon. At some point, World War III might break out, caused by some crazy person. But this type of war, 
with an enemy like this is difficult to win. This is really very exceptional. In the future, maybe we will be prepared for a situation like this. The important thing is that we learn from this and see things clearly. And then hopefully we can be prepared a bit earlier next time.